Hi there, welcome back. If you've been watching my channel for any length of time, you would have seen me use this guy quite a bit when I do the IF alignments of tube radios. Now all this is, is an RF attenuator, 50 ohm input, 50 ohm output. This is to match the output impedance of my signal generator. And what it does is it allows me to apply three attenuation levels to this. I have a 6 dB, a 12 dB, and an 18 dB switch. I can switch in any combination of those dB values and they just sum as I need it. Now the reason I need this is because my signal generator, which is a Rigol DG1022, and it's served me very, very well so far, but although the frequency goes up to the frequency I need of 10.7 megahertz, which is the max I need, the amplitude is a bit too high for some of these uh, procedures. The lowest I can get there, I believe, is 1.4 millivolts RMS, and that's far too high for what I need when I do some of the uh, alignments. Now, this is uh, basically three pi attenuators in series. They switch into each other, and this one is also AC coupled, so there's a capacitor that stops any DC from going through. That's also important because you, you might have uh, high uh, voltages on your uh, tube radio and you don't want that to go back into your signal generator. Now, the workings or the theory behind this is very simple. Each of these is uh, a pi attenuator, uh, which consists of three resistors in a pi format, which you either go through them or bypass them, depending on the setting of the switch. The description of this attenuator is actually very well done by a fellow YouTuber called W2AEW, and I will link that video. He's got a video there, uh, which is basic RF attenuations, design, construction, testing, pi, and T-style a tutorial. And it's very, very well explained, much better than I could possibly do. So I'll link that and you can go and look at the theory of that. There are a number of calculators on the web where you tell them what attenuation you need. In other words, how, much, how many dBs you want to attenuate, what the uh, input and output impedance is that you want, and they will give you the resistor values automatically. Sometimes getting those resistor values right or getting resistors to that value is a little bit complicated because they don't uh, follow, they don't exactly produce standard values. But you put some in parallel or in series, you can always get close enough. And bear in mind, this is not a not necessarily something you want uh, huge precision on. So as long as you get close enough, the result will work. Now, I want to rebuild this thing, and one of the reasons, various reasons, one of them is it's only got three steps. I want more steps. I want to be able to reduce the signal level in a more precise way. So I want about, say, six different steps. I possibly also want to go higher than the total that I can here, which is uh, 36 dB. So I will probably need to make some intermediate values or, or duplicate some of these. The other thing I want to do is ensure that this thing is uh, better protected in terms of noise because this thing is a plastic box. It served me very well as I said but it does introduce noise and the higher you go in frequency the more important that becomes and the way this is built is basically there. I've got the double pole double throw switches on there, the slider switches on the one side, it passes the signal straight through, and the other one, it applies that pie-shaped network of resistors. And you can probably see that I've used multiple resistors stacked on top of each other to get the right values in parallel. The capacitor you see there is the DC blocking. It's a 100 nanofarad uh, film type. This one is a VEMA. And so I need to keep that in place, but I do want to make more steps and better shielding. And the reason for that is I want to add to something that I've been using for some time and I'm quite happy with. This is another gadget that I'm sure you've seen on some of the videos, the ones dealing mostly with uh, power amplifiers. And what this is, is basically a switching system between a speaker and a dummy load. There are two of them, the right channel and the left channel. They're identical. If you look at the right channel, what we've got is you take your audio from your speaker out in the amplifier and you plug them in here. You choose between speaker 
not connected or dummy. Inside here are uh, some power resistors that um, form a dummy load. They can be set to produce a, an 8 ohm load or a 4 ohm load. The other thing I have here is a BNC out which is connected across the speaker and that allows me to connect it with these very simply to the uh, to the scope in other words one for each channel and I can monitor the audio output signal on the scope now this video is not about this particular dummy load what it is it's about the system and this system is it's a module that I've built which I connect to the bottom of the lower shelf here and I'm going to be rebuilding these shelves very very soon and I want to make more of these modules so what I really want to do is create a, uh, you know, an attenuator system, which will be another one of these modules. And these are aluminium, extruded aluminium rectangular pieces, and I can cut them to the length I want. I can label, label them any way I want, and I can create this bar underneath the shelf with whatever modules I need. And I've already thought of quite a few, like rebuilding this one, like um, the one I'm talking about now, the attenuator, a audio preamp, a power amp, you know, a workshop bench power amplifier. So I can build a whole lot of modules in, on the bottom here and keep it quite uniform and also keep them very simple to, to change, swap out and, and replace and update as we go along. Because as you know, in this hobby, you're never happy with what you've got. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to be designing a new version of this that'll fit on one of those modules. And because of my recent conversion to using PCBs for um, prototyping as opposed to using all the other methods that I got very, very tired with, JLC PCB has uh, sponsored a couple of my videos. They're sponsoring this one as well because I'm going to do this on, uh, I'm going to build a PCB for this and I'm going to be using their services. I'm going to design the layout of the board on their uh, EZDA PCB design software. I'm going to order the boards and when they come in, I'll show you what the result is. So without further ado, I think it's time to get onto the computer. Here's a very good explanation on the pipad attenuator. It's on electronics-tutorials.ws and they've got the various types and here they give you a full explanation probably a lot more than you'll need to know about how this thing works and here on all about circuits is a pi attenuator calculator where you simply enter the attenuation you want let's call it 6db the impedance i want 50 ohm impedance and i calculate and it gives me two values here R1 150.47 ohms, R2 37 ohms. In other words, this resistor here, this R1 and that R1 will be 150 ohms, and this one here is 37.35. So we know exactly how to calculate these for different values. And if I put in here to say 20 dB, 50 ohms, I get 61.11 ohms and 247. So call it 60 and 250. And there we go. Simple as that. These are all available on the web. And I really advise you to do the calculations from there. All right, we're in EZDA and we're going to start a new project called Pi Attenuator. We're in the schematic now. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to find a BNC connector. Here we have one. This is a PC board mount. That's exactly what we want. Place, I presume three and four. This must be the ground. So place that. We need a switch. And the one I want is a double pole, double throw. Toggle switches. I actually want to use a toggle, a true toggle, as opposed to a sliding switch this time. That looks like it. Let's see what this is. Yep, 
there's no middle position it's just on on which is exactly what I want I don't want a middle position so that's that looks good that's the one I want so I'll place that let's leave it there for now and now I need three resistors and the resistors I need are 1206 resistors I want surface mount yep that looks right I'm not going to worry about the value right now I just want to set this up so I'll place that guy there's one there's two and there's three now what I'm going to do is basically build up this T so that we get this thing working what we have here is the way it works is you've got these this is the uh, crossbar resistor these are the two to ground and I can get ground here well those two are actually ground now if I wire these up this is how they're wired and what you want then is you want to be able to bypass this guy with the switch now this switch I'm going to rotate So what we have is a signal comes in here and if the position is down then we want this thing to go through there which means we want to bring this to there so the signal comes in there down here into here goes through the pad comes out the pad into that point up there and it goes out to the next one if the position is up we want it to go straight through so we just put this straight through and I think that's that's it okay and here's my first one here's my first pad which I can now convert to PCB and what I'll be doing is creating a whole number of these these modules each one is one uh, attenuator now the one thing I do want to do here is because these resistor values are sometimes difficult to get exact I want to create pads for two in parallel so I'm going to put two everywhere where I have one. And the reason for this is I want this to be, I want provision to be made for this on the board. So I'm basically paralleling resistors in order to easily reach or achieve the values that I want. With surface mount resistors, you can actually get away with doing um, two on top of each other. But I, I prefer to leave the pads, I prefer to leave this ready for it like that. Next, I can save this and I can convert to PCB. This is going to be here. Let me create the snap size. Let's make this inches. Grid size 0.1 inch snap size 0.1 inch and the alternative snap 0.05 inch I think we'll get away with that so let me there we go that snapped in so this guy is going to go here let me start with the resistors um, what have I got there? I've got R1 and 4 are the ones that go across the top. So resistor 1 and resistor 4. And then we've got these two here. And these two here. Again, one of the reasons I'm doing this is somebody asked me to show how we do the layout. Now, I am not an expert on layouts. 
but I hope to do a decent enough job. Those two are together. These guys are going to go to ground. That one belongs on that side. Let's see, this is uh, 2635. So 2 and 6, 3 and 5. I think that'll work. Um, now let me do the wiring. Now the routing is, I'm going to use, actually you go to millimeters, I'm going to use 0.5 millimeters. Routing with a tenth, 0.24, I'm going to put 0.5. So when I go from here to there, that's a simple short. If I go from here, I need to go to that guy. These two are in parallel. These two are in parallel and they come to here, okay. And that one goes to there. Can go from there to there and it goes to ground. So those two guys go to ground. And we've just done the wiring of the first one. And that's it, isn't it? This is all the top layer. I'm doing this on one layer. So the switch will be soldered on the top. The resistors will be below. Now the idea is that the switch will, because it's a toggle, I'll drill the hole onto the panel. The panel will be aluminum and it means that we have some shielding there and the back of the board I'm going to put a ground plane which is also going to be shielded so all this will be contained as very very close to the to the front panel which gives it more uh, shielding. Brilliant! That works! How many of these side by side do I want? Well let me go to the Okay, and I can go back to there, and now I'm going to create the whole thing again. So I think I can do this, Control c Control v It's pretty intuitive. It works. And what happens now is that I've got exactly the same thing, and I connect this one to that one. And of course, this one then moves on to the next one, which I can do right now. Okay, now we've got to save this and we can update the PCV. Apply changes. Okay, and I've got another lot of the stuff to do. So it's a question of following the previous example and just redoing it. Here goes. All right, so what do we have here? What size do we have here? See what size we got here. We've got 14 centimeters. I want 10 centimeters about. Okay. The uh, PC board sizes, I believe, are 100 by 100 millimeters max, so 10 centimeters by 10 centimeters max. But I can do this. Put another one on here and probably make double that. So. So what do we got now? We've got four of them and we've got a bit of a space problem. That's perfectly centered. There's two there, there's two there. And I've now got four of these and I want eight of them. I've got to make two boards. I've got to make two boards. I've got to add the capacitor in here. Um, I'm actually not going to put this connector here. I'm going to make this. Yeah, this thing is going to be outside the board. It's going to be connected with... Uh, it's not going to be a board mount, PCB mount. It's going to be a panel mount. And each of those will have a connector. That one will have a connector. Now what I need to do here is I need to put a solder pad. I'm not going to connect this like that. I'm going to remove that guy. 
and I'm going to add a solder tab. And what I want is, I want one of these for grounds as well. Because I want to be able to move the grounds over as well. I'll show you what I want to do in a minute. Let's see if this works. Update PCB, light changes. So what I've got here is a ground, that's ground, and that's our one input. And here we have our output, ground, That goes to there, and that goes to, to there. So what have we got here? We just need the capacitors. That's ground through there, all the way across, all the way across, all the way across, all the way across. Comes out that end. There's our signal path through there. There's one line missing here. And then our input B and C will be here. It'll connect to that. This will connect to the other board, the one next to it, or the one next to it, or the one next to it, however many we want. And we will have our modular system. I think it'll work. I should put in a option for our um, capacitor, DC blocking capacitor, instead of putting that in the, um, on the on the actual socket, I can put it on here. All right, we've got this thing the way we want it. I'm going to have eight levels. I'll decide later which uh, resistor values to put in, but this will give me exactly what I want. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to clean up some of the labeling here, because remember, this is going to be, um, silk screen is going to look like that. I don't want it to look like that. Let me get a photo view. That's what this is going to look like, and I like it. I might actually just use one, or I might use two, or I might use three. I can use as many as I want, actually, in a row, because I've got the input here. This is actually ground, the ground, the input. Oh, I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to put a, I'm going to put a layer, um, ground layer on here on both sides. 3D view. Yeah. Looks good. Looks good. It's about as close together as I can get them. Nothing much on this side, is there? Just those points, which is exactly what I wanted. Now I'm going to change those labelings. And I'll get back to you. Well, to cut a long story short, I've done the cleanup. I've done some small adjustments. Let me just go through very quickly what I've done here. I've re-labeled the components. So I've called each resistor 1 and 1A, 2 and 2A, 3 and 3A. These are the paralleled ones. I have corrected where or adjusted where I want the labeling to come through on the silk screen. You can adjust every single part of this element. I've created a a ground plane on the top, it's this red one you see here. If I hide the top layer, you see the bottom layer. It's also got a ground plane, the blue one. And I can adjust the, uh, the amount of distance. The distance is separation from the other 
parts of the uh, of the circuit. I've made that. What did I make that? Can't remember. Probably about half a millimeter. And then I've also created three vias here, over here, which connect this top uh, ground plane to the bottom ground plane. You'll notice that the ground planes um, connect directly to the ground points here on the components. All the components that are connected to ground go straight through to the ground planes. I am wondering whether this will cause any problems having a basically a circular ground. I don't think so. And it's going to go out like this anyway. Put a label on there on the one side only and we should be able to see if I go here and do 3D view this is the result and on the underside you just see the through hole portions or components there's that veer that I told you about so this is it. This is good. This is what I want. Brilliant. Now, uh, generate fabrication files. Gerberis. Checking design rules. What do I have here? It's giving me clearance issues on the on the three. Um, Veers, which is not a problem. I actually want a short, so that's fine. Generate Gerber. Two layers. I'll do five. What do I want this time? Do I want red? Yeah, I'll do red. It's adding the Gerber files. Here we go. We're there. Two layers. There's the size. Quantity five. Red. This is all the same as my previous orders. Save that to cart. Check out securely. No, I'll do ePacket. The reason I don't want to do DHL here is because they sent my last package to customs, which was crazy for a $5 order. It certainly was not necessary. So continue. Submit order. And that's it. We just do the business here. And we are done. We are done. There's the last order that I've placed. And I can get the product details here. It is red, just checking that. They always show the preview here in green. As you can see, the merchandise, this, this is $2, comes out at $181. I pay more for shipping than, than that, but that's because I live on Paradise Island, as I've mentioned before. And uh, now I just wait, and when I get it back, I'll be doing the build and hopefully have some of the hardware ready for that, um, for the modular units on my shelves and show you how that gets put into practice. Guys, thanks for watching. Um, hope you enjoyed this. And if you haven't tried it yet, try these guys. They've uh, produced some amazing results so far. I'm really, really happy. And I'll see you again soon. Bye for now.